Act Four, a gallery decorated with candelabras, lighted chandeliers, flowers, garlands, and in short, made ready for the festivities. Well, my love, are you happy? My persuasive golden-tongued mother has talked the doctor into it. He's not all that keen, but he's going to marry her, so your miserable uncle hasn't a leg to stand on. There's only his lordship who's furious because at long last our wedding is going to take place immediately after theirs. So, smile, it's all turned out fine in the end. Did you ever see anything so strange? Or, or as cheering. All we wanted was to worm a dowry out of his excellency and we've ended up getting our hands on two, neither of which is from him. You had to contend with a determined rival. I was tormented by a harpy, but now both have turned to our benefit into the best of mothers. Yesterday I was what you'd call an orphan. Now I have both parents, not as grand as I had convinced myself they would be, I grant you, but good enough for me, or we're not as choosy as rich people But none are. of the things you plan. Chance performed better than a whole lot of us, my sweet. That's how things work. You strive and plan and propose on the one hand, and on the other, chance disposes. From the empty belly conqueror who sets out to gobble up the whole world, follows where his dog leads. We are all fortune's playthings. And the blind beggar is often better led and less frustrated in his plans than that other blind fool for all his retinue of advisors. And that's reckoning without the obliging blind god we call Cupid. He is the only one I'm concerned about. If, uh, to continue in this foolish vein, you let me be the dog that guides him to your pretty door, we'll move in and be happy ever after. Cupid and you? Me and Cupid. And you'll never look for alternative accommodation? If you catch me trying, they a million lovers. Now you're exaggerating. Tell me the honest truth. I'm telling you the most honest truth I know. Don't give me that. You mean there's more than one kind? Of course. Ever since people started noticing that in time, yesterday's inanity turns into today's wisdom, and that little old lies planted haphazardly grow into vast and mighty truths, there have been countless varieties. Truths you know, but cannot reveal, and for not every truth is suitable for telling. Truths you repeat, truth is worth believing. The vows of lovers, the threats of mothers, the pledges of drinkers, the promises of politicians, the businessmen's handshake. <sighs> There's no end to it. There's only one truth that's pure and unadulterated. My love for Suzette. I love to see you in such high spirits because you say such crazy things and that tells me you're happy. But we've got to discuss this meeting with the Count. Or preferably, let's never mention it again. It almost lost me my Suzanne. So now you'd rather it didn't happen? If you love me, Suzette, give me your word that you won't go. Leave him to kick his heels by himself. That'll teach him. It was harder for me. Settled then. Is that your honest truth? I'm not all like all you clever men. I only know one sort. And you love me a little? A lot. A lot's not much. How do you mean? You see, where love's concerned, too much is never enough. All that's too subtle for me. But I shall love no one but my husband. Stay true to that. You'll be a glorious exception to the rule. <laughs> I said wherever they are, they're sure to be together. Really, Figaro. Arranging cozy trysts like this is anticipating the future <sighs> and degrading to marriage and yourself. His lordship's waiting for you, and he's getting impatient. You're right, madam. I was forgetting myself. I'll take my excuse with me to show him. He'll be along presently. Have you got everything we need for the exchange of clothes? We don't need anything, madam. The meeting's been cancelled. Oh? You've changed your mind? It was Figaro. You're deceiving me. Heaven forbid! Figaro's not the sort to let the dowry slip through his fingers. Your ladyship, whatever are you thinking? That you're in the Count's pocket, and you're wishing you hadn't told me his plans. I can read you like a book. Leave me. In the name of God, in whom we all hope, don't you realize how hurtful you're being, madam? After all the kindness you've shown and the dowry you gave me. Oh, please. 
I don't know what's got into me. If I take your place in the garden, you, sweet girl, won't have to go. You'll be keeping your word to your husband, and you'll be helping me to get mine back. You made me feel awful. A foolish woman being stupid, that's all. Where are you supposed to meet him? The garden is all I remember. Take this pen, and we'll decide on a place. Write to him? There's no other way. But, madam, at least you should be the one who... I'll take full responsibility. Suzanne sits at the table while the Countess dictates. New lyric to the old tune. How sweet at eve the balmy breeze. Under the spreading chestnut trees. How sweet at eve. Under the spreading chestnut trees. Go on. You think he won't understand? It's fine. What shall we seal it with? A pin. And hurry. It will do for the reply. Right on the back. Please return the pin. Ha <laughs> ha, a pin. This is more amusing than the business with the commission. Oh. oh. I, I haven't a pin on me. Use this one. The page's ribbon falls out of the top of her dress. Oh, my ribbon. It's that little thief's. You weren't so cruel as to... Oh, I could hardly leave it round his arm. That wouldn't have done at all. Give it back. You shouldn't keep it on you, madam. It's got the lad's blood on it. It will do for Fanchette. The next time she brings me flowers... Enter Cherubine, dressed as a girl. Fanchette, a number of girls dressed like her and also holding posies of flowers. Your ladyship, these are girls from the town. They've come here with flowers for you. They're quite lovely. I'm sorry, my dears, but I don't know all of you. Who is this lovely girl? Oh, she looks so shy. She's my cousin, your ladyship. She's come for the wedding. She's very pretty. Now, I can't possibly hold 20 posies, so let the visitor do the honors. Why, she's blushing. Suzanne, don't you think she looks like someone? You're right. The spitting oh, image. puts one hand on his heart. Oh, she kissed me. In my wildest dreams, I, I never thought. I tell you, your lordship, he's here. They dressed him up at my daughter. His own clothes is still there. He, here's his officer hat. I picked up off the pile. Goes toward the girls, peers at them, recognizes Cherubin, and removes his bonnet so that his long hair cascades down. Ha <laughs> ha! his cap and says, <laughs> Didn't I say it were him when we was upstairs? Oh my God! The ruffian! Ah, it's him. That's what I told you. Well, madam? Well, sir! Can't you see that I'm even more surprised than you are, and at least as angry? Yes, but what about earlier this morning? I would be truly guilty if I continued the pretense. He'd come to my room. We were planning the charade which these girls have just acted out. You caught us while we were dressing him. Your first reaction was so furious that he ran away. I, I became flustered, and the rest flowed from the general panic. Why didn't you leave? Your lordship... I'm going to punish you for disobeying. Oh, listen to me, your lordship. Every time you come looking for me and wanting to kiss me, you know, you always say, lovely, my pretty Fanchette, and I'll give you any... Did I say that? Yes, your lordship. So instead of punishing Carabine, give him to me to be my husband. I'll, I'll love you till I burst. I'm jinxed by this pain. Oh, sir, now it's your turn. This child's admission, which is as innocent as my own, demonstrates two things. That if I give you cause to be uneasy, I always do it unintentionally. Well, you go out of your way to multiply and give ground for my anxieties. 
you and all your lordship by the stars I'll, I'll tan her hide like what her late mother who's departed used to it ain't for anything she's done it's for what your ladyship knows very well that when little girls grow up to be big girls oh some evil genius bent on turning everything against me if your lordship keeps these girls here we won't be able to start either the celebrations or the dancing you dancing have you forgotten after your fall this morning and twisting your right ankle it still hurts a bit but it's nothing come on my little beauties let's be off it was lucky for you that flower bed was just Soft most earth. fortunate as you say <laughs> otherwise <laughs> don't forget that he bunched himself up all the way down to the ground you mean somebody fitter would have stayed suspended in midair huh. are you coming my young ladies and for all that time i suppose that young page was galloping to seville on his horse galloping or trotting and you had his commission in your pocket of course but why the inquisition best put forward girls and there's a girl that says my future nephew is nothing more than a liar. Cherubim, blast the little weed. Cumbled yet? Of course I've got it. Now what yarn has he been telling? It's no yarn. He says he's the one who jumped into the wall. Perhaps he was. I can't argue about things I don't know. So the two of you. Why not? The urge to jump can be catching. Remember Panerge's sheep? And when you lose your temper, sir, there's no one who wouldn't prefer to risk. What? Both together? We'd have jumped if there'd been a couple of dozen of us. Anyway, what does it matter, your lordship, since nobody got hurt? Look, are you coming or not? Have you strayed into some kind of farce? The procession. To your places, girls, to your places. Come, Suzanne, give me your arm. Did you ever see such brass-faced nerve? And you, you little sneak, spare me the blushes and go and get dressed properly at once and stay out of my sight for the rest of the evening. He'll be so bored. Me? Bored? Uh, there's enough happiness here on my forehead to last me a hundred years in prison. What happiness has he got on his forehead? His first officer's cap, I imagine. Boys love toys. Aren't you staying, madam? You know I'm not feeling well. Could you stay long enough for a word about Suzanne? Otherwise, I'll think you're angry with me. Both wedding groups are coming. We'd better sit down and welcome them. In Barrett, what can't be cured must be endured. Everyone from the chateau enters from the wedding. Antonio, who is to give Suzanne away, leads her by the arm. Figaro, who is to give Marceline in marriage to Bartolo, leads her by the arm. Suzanne pulls at the Count's coat and shows him a note she is holding. Impatient to read it, he snatches it from her hand. As he does so, he winces like a man who has pricked his finger badly. He shakes it, squeezes and sucks it, and glaring at the note, which is fashioned by a pin, says, Blast these women. They stick pins in everything. It's a love letter. No doubt one of the girls slipped it to him as she filed past. He was fastened with a pin, and it had the impertinence to prick him. The dancing resumes. The Count, who has read the note, turns it over and sees the request to return the pin. He looks for it on the ground until he finds it. He sticks it in his sleeve. Anything touched by the one we love is precious. Look, he's, he's picking up the pin. What a strange man he is. Stay where you are. You can't all come in. Guards, lend a hand here. What's happening? It's Don Basile, your lordship. He's brought the whole village with him. They followed him because he was singing as he walked back. Let him in. No one else. Will you allow me to withdraw? I shall not forget your compliance. Suzanne, she will be back directly. Come, we must go and exchange clothes. Wherever Basile goes, he turns up and makes trouble. Don't worry, I'll put a spoke in his wheel.
Heart so tender, heart so faint, who groans that love is callous. Cease now your fond complaint. Capricious. Cupid has wings, Cupid has darts. Is it surprising he flits among hearts? No, that's exactly why he has wings on his back. Now, friend, what's the meaning of all this hullabaloo? Having demonstrated my obedience to his lordship by entertaining this gentleman, who is a guest of his, I in turn can appeal to his justice. Go on, your honorship. He didn't entertain me one little bit with them rubbish old songs. What exactly do you want, Bazir? What is rightly mine, your lordship? The hand of Marceline. I've come to object formally. When was the last time, sir, you saw the face of a lunatic? Since my eyes give such a perfect reflection of yourself, look into them and heed my prediction. If you so much as attempt to go anywhere near the lady... <laughs> Why shouldn't he? Let him speak. Sh surely there's no reason for two friends... To <laughs> friends? You must be joking! Because he composes boring church music? Because he churns out poems for the newspapers? Barroom strummer? <laughs> Scribbling hack? Pedant of the oratorio? Jockey of the diplomatic bag? And impotent ruffians, the pair of you. He snipes at me, but never hits the target. That's as maybe, but you're the one person I'd never miss. Going around telling everybody I'm stupid. I suppose that makes me an echo. There isn't a singer who, on the strength of my talent, hasn't been cheered. Cheered. Oh, he's doing it again. And why not, since it's true? Are you some royal prince who has to be fawned over? Since you can't afford to pay people to lie to you, you have to face the truth, you weevil. And if you're afraid of hearing the truth from me, why did you come here and disrupt my wedding? Did you, or did you not, promise me that if within four years you weren't spoken for, you would give me first refusal? On what condition did I promise that? Then if you ever found a son you said was lost, I would agree to adopt him. Oh, he's, he's been found. He's been found. Well, that's no problem. And here, and here he, is. he is. Oh, this is a nightmare. D does this mean you give up all claims to his loving mother? Can you think of anything worse than to have people believe you're the father of a, a bad lot? A good for nothing? Yes, that people think you are the son of one. Don't make me laugh. If this gentleman has some role in this business, then I declare I want no part in it. <laughs> so in the end, I'm to have my bride after all. <laughs> I'm my mistress. And so everybody's happy. Let both contracts be drawn up and I'll sign them. Long oh, live his lordship. I need an arm to myself. And I gotta go and help with the fireworks we were told is to be put under the big chestnut trees. What certain ordered you to do that? Why, is there a problem? Her ladyship is not well. How can she see the display? The place for it is on the terrace under her window. Hear that, Cripsole, the terrace. Under the chestnuts, indeed. They were about to send my plans up in flames. He seemed unusually concerned about his wife. I must have a word, my son. I'd like to clear my feelings for you, and as a result, I was unfair to your charming Suzanne. I assumed she was conniving with the Count, even though I'd heard from Basile that she always kept him at arm's length. You don't know much about your son if you think I can be put off my pride by put off my stride by female wiles, I defy the most des designing woman to pull the wool over my eyes. It's always nice to think so, but jealousy, son. Is merely the foolish madness of the brain. No, mother, on that subject, I have a philosophy which is unassailable. If someday Suzanne is unfaithful, I forgive her here and now, but she'll have had to work hard at it. He turns and sees Fanchette, who is looking for someone. Hey, it's my little cousin. 
you were listening. No, I wasn't. I never did. People say it's not nice to listen. Quite right. But since it can be useful, people don't always worry about that. I was just looking to see if someone was here. Ah, uh -huh. already up to no good, are we? You know very well he can't possibly be here. Who do you mean? Carabine. I know where he is. It's not him I'm looking for. It's Suzanne, my cousin. And what does my dear cousin want her for? Well, since you're my dear cousin too, I'll tell you. It's, it's just a pin. I'm supposed to give it back to her. A pin? A pin? Who told you to return it, you little pest at your age and already acting as a go- uh, You've already been a great help, Fanchette. I, I know you always do your best. My little cousin is, is very pretty and so kind. Then why were you getting so cross? I'm no. going. No, I was just joking. Listen, that little pin of yours is the one his lordship told you to give back to Suzanne. It was used to fasten a letter he had. You see, I know all about it. If you know, why did you ask? know how his lordship went about getting you to run his errand for him. He said it just like you did. Oh, Fanchette, give this pin to your pretty cousin. Just tell her that it's the one that fastened the chestnuts. Ch chestnuts. Oh, and he also said, take care no one sees you. Ah, and mind you do. Luckily no one has seen you, so off you go and run your errand like a good girl and don't tell Suzanne anything except what he told you to say. Why would I do that? There's no need to treat me like a child, cousin. Uh, well, mother. Well, son. I, I don't believe it. Really, of all things. Of all things? What things? What's wrong? What I've just heard, mother, has struck here like a bullet. So the heart that was brimming with confidence was in fact just an overinflated balloon? A prick with a pin and whoosh, all gone? But that pin, mother, it was the one he picked up. Jealousy. On that score, I have a philosophy which is unassailable. If some say Suzanne is unfaithful, I forgive her, here and now. Oh, mother, the way we feel dictates the way we speak. Get the steeliest judge to plead his own defense, and what does he do? He exploits points of law. I'm not surprised now why he got so worked up about the fireworks. As to our lady of the pins, she's not as smart as she thinks she is with her chestnuts. I'm enough of a husband to have the right to be angry. On the other hand, I'm not sufficiently married yet to rule out the possibility that I might just drop her and marry someone else. You call that thinking? You'd throw it all away for a mere suspicion? Tell me, how do you know it's you she's deceiving and not the Count? Have you so revised your opinion of her character that you can convict her out of hand? How do you know if she'll go anywhere near the chestnuts, or why she would go, or what she'd say or do? I credited you with more common sense. You're right, Mother. So right. Always right. But let's make some allowance for human nature. We'll feel better for it afterwards. We'll make some inquiries before we start throwing accusations about and taking steps. I know where they've arranged to meet. Goodbye, Mother. Goodbye. I know too. Now that I've stopped him doing anything silly, let's find out what Suzanne has been getting up to. No, I'll warn her. She's such a pretty girl. Ah, provided our own personal interest does not set us at each other's throats, we poor oppressed women are more than prepared to rise up and defend ourselves against the whole of the proud, the fearsome, and really rather simple-minded male sex.